Good morning, happy Friday, and welcome back to the No For Life Show, where I, Sunita, along with my co-host Tracy, we hop on every Friday and talk about everything North Fork. It is gray, it is rainy, but the temperature is slowly rising on the North Fork, so summer is coming. I know it's a little ways away, but we've had a few teaser dates, a few teaser days, because the sun has been warm. I think it was like 70-something last week, um, and... The cherry blossoms are blooming. And if you know about the North Fork, you know it's a little bit seasonal, but farm stands are opening up. It just feels like everything is coming back. It is our annual celebration for the Nofo Life show. We started the show in the month of May, three years ago. So that's why our celebration ends up being in May. Good morning, Tracy. How are you? Good morning. How are you? I'm good. I'm Okay, if it's raining, I'm so excited about the, the party coming up. I'm like, I don't care. Rain, be great. See if I care. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, having a two-year-old makes you appreciate the rain because she loves jumping in puddles. So you get excited when you're like, oh, it's a puddle day. <laughs> but good for you for now being okay with her messy clothes yeah. and all the stuff that comes with that. Because, have, you know, puddles are fun. I have come a long yeah. way, as we know. As I know. <laughs> Especially from, especially from the food and the kitchen, right. which is messy. I can only imagine. And you know what's the hardest part? And I know you're living it. You freaking have to clean that and pick that up every single day, and then the next day it happens again and again and again. And like most an endless loop. Time today. Yes, <laughs> it's an endless loop. Good morning. I was gonna say Melinda, but I'm like, who's Melinda? <laughs> yeah, I'm Melinda. That's <laughs> Remembers Melinda, so Mel is just easier. I know. I, I just always say Mel, and I was like, Melinda. I know. Who is that? Who is I've that actually, person? I've actually done that too, where I'm like typing. I'm like, Melinda. Melinda. That's Melinda. <laughs> okay. It feels it feels so official, like you're an official business on the show. I know show, that's so. my official business name. Well, it's funny. It confuses people when I introduce myself as Melinda, and they're like, What? <laughs> Where's Mel? <laughs> It's honestly, it's because in high school, I got tired of everyone calling me Melissa, which is a beautiful name, but I, just, I, I didn't, I stopped correcting people, you know, which is fine. I'm, yeah. you know, I'm sure you have that too. And actually Tracy, you probably get Stacy. And I, do. And I, I stopped get correcting Stacey people. a lot. Yeah. And then somehow it just became Mel, and, which is great. <laughs> Well, welcome, Melinda Morris. Melinda, <laughs> Mel is the owner of a cute little store in Southall called Arnie Papieri. I always say it wrong, but... Um, it's but papery. Papery. Okay. Yeah. Papery. Like um, papery with a Y. Today you're on here as the, um, I don't want to say mama bear, but, you know, because in the polar bears, that's what we call our group leaders is mama bear and papa bear. So you are here as the mama bear of a women's entrepreneur group on the North Fork called Women Entrepreneurial Business Group. So tell us all about this kick-ass group, how you started it, why you started it, what was in your brain? Okay, well... You guys are both sort of partial inspirations for the starting of it, and this is such a good example. So I moved here in 2019, full time, and I had a few friends, but didn't really know anybody. And as a sort of obsessive networker, and I love connecting with people, and just like both of you, I'm just an outgoing person, and that brings me energy, and I'm an extrovert, and all those things. And so I sort of threw myself at a lot of people. Like, Tracy, I was like, I need to know you. How do I get to know you? Do, you know, all of those things. So I just, and people were so, un women were so unbelievably generous. Of course, men were too, but just ridiculously generous with not only being welcoming, but supportive and ideas. They didn't know me at all. I met, I would call people and be like, can you meet me for, you know, can we meet for a drink? Can I buy you a coffee? And so many people said yes. Why? I don't know, but I'm really grateful for that. So that sort of prompted me to meet all these amazing people with these incredible businesses and incredible ideas and who were connecting me to other people. But I realized none of them knew each other, which I'm like, how do you not know each other? This is crazy. Like, you know, and I can think of a lot of different people where it was like, um, I know you had, just had Allie Katz on the show. 
and she was a perfect example. I walked in her store, we became fast friends. We were like, oh my God, we have so much in common and we, you know, businesses and all this stuff. And I was like, wait, how do you not know blah, 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 or this one? So for about two years, I ruminated on this and I was always like sending emails and connecting people. And then in, it was winter, what was it, 22, I guess, right? I, I, winter, I, I might be the off season for yeah, sure, yeah. It's definitely off season, it was sort of depressing. And I was just like, I wanna see my friends. All my friends who own businesses are really busy yeah. and don't have time. And I, we all I think connect. that's really the key because everybody's in their own store, in their own business. Um, and when you're a small business, it can be a little isolating because you're doing everything for, you know, what you need to do. You don't have a chance to even talk to the neighboring store. A thousand percent. So that was part of it is I had met some of my neighboring stores, all that stuff. And I was like, why can't we all get together? And so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to pick a day of a month and I'm just going to find a place and we'll just all meet up that day of the month. That was it. That was literally the whole thing. Well, and now I, I remember yeah. you coming to me. I forgot why I was in the store. I was in the store and we were chatting and you were like, I want to do so. And this was probably at least six months, if not more, prior to you actually starting web. So I know that you had been really ruminating on it and mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to do it. Cause you were like, I just want to get people together and like women and, you know, create a group. Mm -hmm. So you manifested it because oh, you were talking about it and, and putting it out into the world. Here. And I talked yeah. to everyone about it. And that was, yeah. I, I will say that's part of the impetus for it is everyone I spoke to about it. Cause anybody who has met me knows I just talk about everything constantly and get, I uh, get everyone's buy-in and everyone said, Oh my God, that's great. I would love it. And so that was sort of what prompted it. But I honestly really never expected more than I sent 20 emails to 20 amazing ladies. I knew like, like local, literally, I think you started with South Old, like all the people, cause there are so many businesses in South Old itself, right? Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't even think I thought it through about where it was. It was literally people I knew personally yeah. that I had a connection with. And I, I mean, it was literally 20 people. <laughs> and some of them had their own businesses. Some of them were launching new ideas. It, I hadn't re it was really just friends. I was like, let's do this thing where, you know, women get together. And then friends invited friends, which was part of it. I was like, invite someone bring someone. And literally that's how it started. And for the first, I guess about six months, it was at the brewery. It was always at, I mean, Greenport Harbor Brewing Company was so generous. And Betsy was one of the people, Betsy Lee G yeah. was one of the people on that list. And I was like, you guys have a lot of space. Do you care if we just show up once a month? And she was like, no, of course, show up once a month. That's awesome. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. And that's how it sort of started. And, and, and what I, I resonated with it also was you're talking about having at the brewery um, every month because your concept was easy and casual. You're yes. not trying to complicate it. Sort of like how we, Tracy and I feel about the show. It's like, it's yep. simple. It works. We're on our phone. You're on your phone. Tracy and I are separately on our phone and it just works. And it was yeah. casual. Um, and that's what I like. You drop in. If you come, there was no commitment or there isn't a commitment, right? Well, that's really important to me. So that was part of the concept is I've done this before, to be totally frank, is I started one in Brooklyn as well um, after the 2016 election um, <laughs> because we all needed support and everyone was sort of melting down and all the women business owners I knew were like losing it. And so I just started this group with different intentions, I would say, and we don't need to get into that, but I realized how powerful that was. And there are women who met in that group who are friends of mine, but who are still really, really close friends from that, from 2016, that shockingly didn't know each other. So it's just that, so when I moved yeah. out here, it, was, it worked really well, it was much smaller. We didn't, it was different. But the whole point was, is I am not someone who wants pay to join something unless I know I want to do that. And more importantly, I didn't want to manage that. Yeah. <laughs> and that's and, another, yes, you had another business sort of that you'd be running. <laughs> and then there's another level, you know, I've been part of other networking groups that are all wonderful, but there's rules and there's who can be there and who can't be there. And yeah. that's awesome. 
I just don't have the time and energy for that. I run a business. I have all these other things happening. I just want to show up or not show up. And I don't well, want there and to also, be- if you're charging people any kind of money, then there's an expectation 100%. that you need to fulfill. Whereas this, you could be like, look, this is where it is. I sent out the email, come, don't come, don't care, whatever. Yeah. Buy your drink, yeah. don't buy your drink, don't care. You know, <laughs> and there's a level of service that you have to provide, like in terms of expectation from both sides, right? From the person running the show, but then also perhaps the participants. And I think those groups, to your point, now serve a purpose and they work for that. But this, the, the, the agenda, if you will, of this group is different. It's more community. It's more um, putting people in a room together and figure out collaborations if you want them or how they work organically. I just want a quick note. Debbie, I'm sorry, I saw your request to join and I don't know if it was a butt dial, so I accepted it, but now I don't know how to remove you from the square. So if you want to exit from the square, feel free to find a way to exit. I thought you were I don't, on to, if I, to praise Mel. <laughs> if I exit, then I shut off completely. I'm literally like putting on makeup. I'm and sorry. I'm the biggest <laughs> fan of Mel and Webb and I'm so psyched, but yeah, I have nothing to do with this program. So I thought you were you know, just yesterday. Yeah, we had the web meeting recently and, and Mel made an announcement saying if anybody wants to hop on and talk about the experience of the web. So when I saw your request to join, I was like, okay, Debbie wants to talk and we want to hear what you have to say. All I'm going to say is it is so incredible and I've met so many amazing women through it and I'm so grateful for Mel for her inclusiveness and her vision and NoFo is the best place. So again, I'm signing off. I wasn't meant to be honest. <laughs> Thank you. You can just leave it on mute and, and okay. listen to us the rest of the time. Okay. Thank you, Debbie. <laughs> I'll tell Debbie's story for her really quick. Is Debbie came to me or came to a web, I don't know, a little over a year ago, maybe more. I've lost track of time. But she had had a similar concept and had d- done a similar thing in her home with, again, people who were connected to each other. And then when she found out about web, she came to me and she's like, can I just roll that in? Can we just make- bring them all over? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can we just forward all the emails and just like everybody join it because there's no reason to do two. And this is, and it was great. So she's had lots of people, lots of friends who of hers join. And that's what's so nice about it. So just, it's the concept is of generosity. And I mean, across the board. And that is why it was really important for me to not have rules and not have stipulations because the whole point is you're coming with a, sort of, like I said, a heart of generosity. And then you leave there with that. It's sort of the whole intention. So to put more rules on it, just sort of, to me, just is a different feel. And that's what why I think it actually has taken off is because people, I get constant emails from people being like, well, what's the charge? I'm like there is none. And that's, I mean, that's on the, gener- again, generosity of the people who host, which has been amazing. So, and so let's, that- let's talk about a few places that you've hosted. Like I said, yeah. in the beginning, you know, you were just starting out, casual, Betsy was generous, and then almost we started feeling bad when we started hosting at other places, because we, we were like, when yeah. are we going back it's to the like, <laughs> Well, what happened was, is the funny story was, is it was just always the blah, you know, what did we do? We started with the first Wednesday of the month or second Wednesday of the month. And then I would get, I also am constantly sort of juggling to kind of uh, accommodate members. And a lot of people were like, I can never come on Wednesday, but I really want to come. So I was like, okay, let's do alternating, which gets a little confusing, but it's either Tuesday or Wednesday. And if you can't come to either of those, again, you know, sorry. I, I, I would like to put in a request that we have an on-site babysitter so I can start coming again. Awesome. <laughs> there, um, I have, there's, there's 50 of them. Just bring her. We'll just pass her around. The hey, whole if you just bring her, I'm sure everybody would be very, very happy to just, well, yeah. The um, but, one you brought her to was at a gallery. I mean, really. I know. <laughs> and I brought Charlie. That was, oh, a, that was a handful. I had Charlie oh. in the bag, Tilly on my hip. It was like, the brewery would have been perfect for that. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. yeah I but I was like, no, no, you can't go here. Tell you there's artwork here. <laughs> well, interestingly, this is a this is a later development, but it's something that the, once it started to grow. It's off topic, I know, but once it started to grow, lots of people have lots of amazing suggestions, and that was my answer to anyone who has ever made a suggestion is great. Do it. 
run with it. Run with it. Yeah. Right. We're not going to get back to Debbie. Um, She's here. You know, on screen, so I see her photo. Go for um, it. She ended up hosting a workshop, correct? Mm -hmm. I mean, that sort of came organically through conversation. And the kid thing, so the babysitter kid thing has come up multiple times because there's oh, really? moms. Oh, really? a hundred percent there's lots of moms obviously who are part of this and kids of similar ages and a couple of people have said to me we should do a mom's group like a spin-off that meets during the day and i was like great right with it yeah i'm always like feel free yeah. you know i her lots of lunch places would be happy that have a little side room or breakfast places would be happy to do it and i'd be happy to help but i'm like okay yeah. so yeah that's the kind of thing where i am looking for expansion and new ideas and to people to use it the way that it serves them best and relationships that they've made and to run with that that's exactly the point yeah. i have no interest in in you know, being the puppeteer of all of it. You know, I yeah. want people to run but, with but, it. But, 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 man, of what you were saying earlier, and again, right, back to Tracy and I had this conversation a lot too of how we can change the format, make it more professional. But I think the reason our little podcast works is because it's organic, because it's casual, and it's easy for everybody to participate. Mm -hmm. And I think the same is true for the web group. It's easy for everybody to participate. Once you start putting layers of what is required, then it just gets too complicated. Mm -hmm. So yeah. maybe it doesn't need to change. Maybe it doesn't need to evolve. And it's just perfect the way it is. I mean, I would like a hair and makeup team in the morning. Other than that, I think we're perfect. Oh, I straightened my hair today. Did anybody <laughs> notice? <laughs> okay, so I want to sorry, yeah. I want to talk about all the venues that we posted that we posted the event. Right. Yeah. So what I was saying that we've always had it at the brewery um, because it was easy. And then <clears throat> one of our meetups, they had a conflict at a concert. And I was like, oh no, what are we gonna do? I guess we'll go somewhere else. And Betsy was like, great, perfect, no problem. So, you know, we always go back there sort of regularly. And the nice thing from the venue perspective, now, you know, is that it really is a wonderful opportunity for a lot of venues yes. and a, all the venues. So just to clarify for anyone who doesn't know, the venues are really range people come to me we you know occasionally we'll reach out to people so we need this big help with that but um most of them are people who are either part of the group or come to me or want to be part of it and all they have to offer is nibbles is sort of the rule that there's always a cash bar if there's food available for people to buy even better um, and then to off offer some sort of free nibbles so that people and and, and the cap capacity of at minimum about 50 people yeah. right because that's kind yeah. of important but, uh, but we've had like to your point a wide range restaurants yeah. vineyards galleries yeah. galleries yep yep and so uh, you know um the gallery is a great example because it's attached to a winery so that was perfect and then she a lot of people collaborate with other vendors and bring them in and that's on them if they want to great and it's also fun so they brought in a caterer to do some platters and i think it's also fun so, for so people. i just want to mention the gallery that's william reese mary yes. from william, william reese hosted and they are connected their building is physically connected to sherwood um vineyards right yep. is that what it's yeah. called and then yeah. they had treatery and just sat bring in platters yes. and stuff and all of these women owned businesses are part of this group yeah. yep um, and um, and the, then I was thinking when the Diamond Estate did it, they had they had a treatery come with Stella, the truck, and she was generous enough to make lobster rolls for everybody. I remember in the garden because it was like a summer evening. Tracy, were you there for that one? No. Nope. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I know. I, there's so many. Literally, and and uh, the venues too, because I don't get out a lot as uh, as a you know mom of a little one. I sometimes I'll read it and I'm like, God, I'm really like, I haven't been to Little Fish yet. And I'm like, I really want to get to Little Fish. This is a perfect opportunity. But then it's like, I don't have anyone to watch Tilly and I can't really bring, you know, I know I can bring her, but it's not the same experience I, for me. I, I felt um, that way about even M because I hadn't been to that vineyard. So, I mean, again, you know, every month I love to go to these meetings, but obviously, you know, when you're busy, you can't go to all, but sometimes the venue is the attraction. Like, no, yeah. I'm definitely making, like, I know first and south this month. 
a lot of people circled it on their calendar because Sarah is just so amazing. And she hit it out of the park. She totally did. She totally did. And that's a great example where Sarah actually said to me in advance, she's like, look, I have this captive audience coming. Of course I'm going to do a lot. You know, and she did. And a lot of people had no idea she was catering. Right. That happened also at Main Road Biscuit. So Marissa from Main Road Biscuit hosted, and that was a great one. And she did an entire catering spread. It was and amazing. I, it was, I mean, there's so many amazing ones. I was thinking of Raphael. Remember oh, Raphael? Right. Did a, I couldn't believe the spread they put but up. The, but the Main Road Biscuit, I can't remember who it was, but it's another member. Sorry if I, if, if I'm forgetting who it is, but didn't know they did catering and then hired them to do catering for an event because she was like, oh my God, I had no idea. This was fabulous. And thank you for that. So it's just, it's subtle. It's that subtle networking thing that isn't networking. Actually, it's the networking for people who hate networking. Yeah. Right? Yeah. On, <laughs> which I do too. Yeah. So, you know, <clears throat> it's been really fascinating to see people are like i'll do it i'll do it you know and some places don't put out food at all and that's okay if there's something to purchase and the other thing i will say is that because there is no fee all of the women um are incredibly generous and it's so nice to see i make a point of saying that the staff is working because generally it's when they're closed almost always yeah. they're not so, so usually the meetings at 5 30 to 7 30 ish whatever like i mean there's you know not a finite end time but right after work people close their stores and then mosey on over there correct would like us to have a more finite end time because <laughs> <Yes. laughs> some of us linger because that's our big night out <laughs> okay let's go go somewhere else <laughs> i mean and that's actually always a challenge is because a lot of the ladies like to get dinner, you know, different groups kind of have dinner after and it's a little always hard out here. That's, I would say that's probably our biggest challenge as a group is if for people who then want to, they're already out, you already got a babysitter. That's what now I'm getting dinner somewhere yeah. and at eight, it's really hard to find some place to get dinner. Especially and give a shout on a Tuesday, you know, Tuesday and Wednesday in the well, off season. Oh, well, right. And places are closed. It's yeah. like nothing's open on a Tuesday and Wednesday, and it's eight o'clock in the North Fork. And if you don't live here, you know, like the carpet rolls right. up, the sidewalk rolls up at 7 30. And the lights are off. Yeah. 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 But I, I, think, I think the vacuum has come out a couple of times. We're in location. I mean, you, we're, we're a pretty good guest. I don't want to make it sound like we're a bad guest. But no. I hear what you're saying because, you know, well, this is a night out. So if you're at a venue and you're listening and watching and you don't even think you're at a venue, you really can be because, like I said, we've done it at an art gallery, we've done it at restaurants, we've done it at vineyards. Um, and, you yeah. know, I, I think we've done a lot of vineyards, but not Mel, all of them. There's who still many. you want to give a shout out to, Mel? Oh, I, I was just going to say a funny little shout out to Touch of Venice. Hosted a workshop. We haven't hosted an event there yet. Um, we're waiting to, for a day when it's nice out. Like out for the garden, yeah. It's hard inside there. Um, but we go to a lot of people, we, whoever. Brian, who owns Touch of Venice, will often stay open late because Noreen, who owns Touch Goods, is an active member and always comes and always calls him to say, can you stay open so we can all come to dinner? <laughs> That's <laughs> so, so nice. Sadly, the Touch of Venice staff has worked many late nights because... <laughs> Everyone ends up going to the bar. Yes, but then, but, so then sweet. But, look on, but look on the flip side, how amazing that because of this gathering, it's automatically supporting then other local yeah. businesses. You know, yeah. I, I, think yeah. I think there's so many layers of what goes on just from having this group. I know last time when we were at First and South, a couple of people, you talked about sharing stories about what the group has brought to them. And I forget her name, but one of them was sharing, um, cause I saw her name tag. I saw her the meeting before, I think at Little Fish maybe. And then her name tag said Nicolette's for the kitchen. And I was like, you're at Nicolette's now? But it literally came about from her networking meeting. She met Amanda. Next thing you know, she's a designer at Nicolette's. Like yep. within, within, 30 days within a month she found a new career new job and you know lori from craft hair hired a hairdresser on i remember spot. that too she shared that in one of the meetings they so met. I think it's she's like i just moved here i'm a, you know a hairdresser and lori's like you're hired <laughs> you're it was adorable i mean and the, I, I, she's like literally start show up monday yeah. you know so 
a lot of people, I will, I will point this out also, a lot of people take the, think it's you have to be a business owner. And I get a lot of questions about, do I have to be a business owner? And that the perfect, the answer is no. That's why I called it entrepreneurial. And quite honestly, I don't ask anyone what they do. The only thing we do ask for the, for the email list is that you live or work in the North Fork, whether you, you know, and that could be, and you could have a business on the South Fork, but you work here and you're connected people here it's just to try to keep it somewhat focused right yeah. because, no because it, it is web north fork right and it's not that you're trying to exclude anybody but the whole purpose it's just, it's is the north fork so and but you're pretty loose about your connection to the north fork as long as you have some connection like don't be like oh i live in ohio but i'm here i'm like okay right, right. <laughs> and my whole thing is that it's entrepreneurial yeah. women which yeah. mean what you want that to mean you know, and that doesn't mean you own a business. Lots of, you know, and, and that's what's so great about it. It's such a diverse well, group. Also, so many people move. Also, so many people move here, right? And now they're trying to figure out their next phase of life. So there's a lot yeah. of sharing of my wheels are turning. I kind of want to do something, but there's so much inspiration of what others are doing. Yeah. You know, so many women show up that are still trying to figure out their either their first story. career or their next career. I have another story about that so a lot of people know Stacy Schumacher and um, Mary Tonic, um, who's Mary Tonic people know her yeah. better that her Instagram name they met at I want to say a year ago I don't know what she told me but I don't remember which meetup but they met at a meetup and immediately hit it off as you know connected souls and they started an ecstatic dance tour which I didn't even know about. She yeah. told me about it yesterday. I was like, wait, I didn't know this was happening. It's fabulous. So, but they, they did not know each other. They connected and they started this group. And it's just like, because of, because they were just in the same room at the same time when we started talking and have this passion that they share together. So it's also things like that. It's not always a job. It's not always business yeah. relations. And it's sometimes it's just about connecting with people who care about things you care about, or you can talk about your business with, which is such a nice thing. Yeah. Like people who don't own their own business don't want to hear you bitch about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think a lot of us, <clears throat> you know, I own a business and it's an event production. Wait, did you say but I have say I own a business? Because I mean <laughs> I think you can say I own six businesses. I own a few businesses. <laughs> well, but that's actually my point. There's there's some businesses that have been around for 20 years that I own, and some businesses that are just still in the incubation phase. And I I don't know what it is and I don't know how it's going to manifest. So being able to come to these groups and just kind of be like I have this idea and I don't know what it is or where it's going and just putting it out to the group, then you get feedback and it kind of helps like go like, oh, let me think about it in this direction. Someone just, it's so funny that you just said that. So a new person, um, Kate Seward, who does um, Wild Plum Poetry, she literally said to me yesterday that she was, she couldn't come because of her baby to the meeting and she was like, I was excited to pitch my new elevator pit yeah. speech because she sees it, she gets exactly that, that it's almost like a little tiny think tank. Yes. You know, where you come, and I know we're not getting into this, we don't have time, but the, the only thing we do is an introduction where everybody introduces themselves and there's, it's controversial, but I feel really strongly. Well, about it's not it. controversial. It's just that the group is continually growing. Yeah. And when you have 40, 50, 60 people that we have to go yeah. around the circle, even just saying who you are and what you do can take a long yeah. time. So, but, but, but it's informative yeah. and interesting. There are a lot of people who flat out don't like it. Someone might comment in the... <laughs> <laughs> well, they can sit at the thing. bar. Yeah. They can sit at the bar. Noreen but, can sit at the bar. A lot of people. <laughs> so that being said, I feel really strongly about it. And granted, extrovert, not afraid of talking in front of people. So I understand that's my take on it. However, I really believe exactly what Tracy just said. It is, yeah. it's an opportunity in the most, it's literally the most supportive room probably you will ever be in. It's yeah. amazing. What? It's just well, I so think supportive. It's important too, because I'm actually not an extrovert. I'm an introvert. 
and, and people think I'm an extrovert. So that forum is perfect for me because as an introvert, I hate going up to a face I don't know and introducing myself and starting a conversation. I'm just, I'm just terrible at that. I don't like that. However, put me in front of a group and ask me to speak and I'm totally fine. So that gives me an opportunity to kind of put myself out there and then people can come up to me yeah. and then I can talk to yeah. them. And, and, so that, I, and, I love when we do that. And I, and I want to give out a shout out to Sasha, right? An example, she probably doesn't want me to talk course, about it. Sasha. But we, I have watched Sasha Samuel, the gorgeous jewelry designer. She is such an introvert, but I've watched her slowly but surely find the courage to blossom and speak up about who she is and what she does. And it's beautiful to watch and kind of necessary in business, right? It's a skill we all have to develop. Yeah. And it's and it's really beautiful to watch businesses start and flourish. Yeah. Right. But there's room for everyone. And that's the other thing is that don't talk yeah. if you don't want to. I'm going to encourage you to for all of those reasons. Because again, my point in doing this is to help everybody sort of connect and grow. But if you don't want to, awesome. Don't. Well, yeah. no and you tried a new idea with the, the color coded stickers, right? So if you're on the hospital, I mean, again, it works, it doesn't work, but it's something to try. I was like, I need all the stickers. <laughs> all the <laughs> well, but actually, well, that's another one. That was Kirsten Krasecki's from Yard Crop. And all of these are not my ideas. Kirsten created that and we ran with it for a while. I might go back to it, but. Um, there's a lot of moving pieces. And so again, I keep being like, nope, simple. Yeah. Simple. Talk to okay. each other. <laughs> Let's talk about if you want to be a member of this group, what somebody who's watching needs to do. So really simple. You just uh, probably the easiest way to do it is to just go on the Instagram page and just send me a direct message. I need your name, your business name, if you have one, and then your email address. That is it. And then they get put on a Google email list, right? Mm -hmm. There's an this is a Google list that goes out monthly with the emails. And that's another thing. I do not send more than two emails a month from web. Occasionally, women who are members of the group, if you are on the list, you can send an occasional email. Most people check with me, which is really nice just to make sure. Um, I try to spread them out. It's really important to me to not spam people. Um, so yeah, so and then you have access to everybody's emails. And you can pointedly send other things so that's where again more of the connection comes up yeah if you have a workshop coming up that you want to share people are really open to it i am it's now two and a half years almost right it's two years plus i have not gotten any complaints about and, and that's kind of important to say because just for somebody new that might be coming in right just because you have access to this and i looked up before i had logged on 378 women are on this list now. I mean, that's insane from 20, right? But I don't think I get more than three, maybe four emails a month. So if two are from you, then it's one or two emails from somebody that has something special coming. Because you can talk about it at the event. So come talk about it there. You don't need to spam people, you know, about what's going on in your life. People are very respectful of it, which I'm glad and appreciate, but also I think people send pointed ones. I definitely yes. get a lot of like, what was that person's name? Because I met them and they have a thing and da 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 da. And they go on the list and find their email and will email like a, you know, oh, I'm doing a yoga thing. I just want people who do yoga or yeah. whatever. So it's worked organically. Again, I have just, I've been very excited about how it just works. It, we really haven't had to change anything and then if you are on the list i always say this out loud again i don't ma i manage it to some extent but if you want to be taken off just take your name off you just delete it end right. of story right. did not right. get any emails and you do not have to come and that's fine and wh where is the next meeting and when so <laughs> okay wrong question <laughs> in, it may change okay. So okay, that's fine. Then just, yeah. just wait for the email. I don't want to give. I know that's the weirdest thing because I'm usually booked a couple months out, but we had a little oh. shift. And so okay, we, then don't worry about it. Then uh, just pay attention to the yeah. email and when it's ready, it's ready. I can tell you that it is June 11th. Okay. Is that the Tuesday? I think it's June 11th. So again, sorry. That seems like the easiest question. I don't actually have an answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of questions, we're over time, but we're going to yeah. quickly do our NOFO Live 5. Okay. So uh, if you were going to take Sunita and I out to lunch or dinner, where would you take us? Nookies. Ooh, 
in Silver Sable. Oh, yes. Ooh, yes. Ooh. Have you guys both been there? Oh, we Tracy had our, and I had we our had the holiday, party. <laughs> holiday party. Tracy, Tracy called okay. it our holiday party. I mean, it was a date, but we should, yeah. <laughs> it was great. The but whole I go back. I think staff of No Go Live was yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> Including Charlie. <laughs> No, Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. No, no, get, it was just two no, of us. Charlie was a bad. Okay. Anyway, if they would let him in. I love what they're doing in Silver Sands, I gotta say. I, the whole thing. The whole thing. I think we, I, the whole, I, 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 I'm gonna say his name wrong. Alex, Tracy, was that his name? One of the owner partners? They, we need to have yes. them on the show at some point. Yeah, absolutely. But they're just, the, they, you know, it's such a respectful to the, to the original yes, space. Yes, And to yes. the work and to the vibe. And I think, and the food is delicious. And I'm just a big fan. So, yeah. go with Nookies. Love it. Great. 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 Okay, I probably know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Brewery, winery, vineyard, cocktail, mocktail, where would you be? Oh my God, all, all, all of the above. <laughs> um, sorry, but that's why I plan these parties. Um, I, I'm going to give a shout out to Sarah at First and South, because honestly, those, I just, I have to say, she's great mocktails. I am a cocktail person, 100%. And so cocktails, I'm a Bricks and Rye fan. I, Evan is a genius. I love Bricks and Rye. But, um, and many vineyards and all the things. But um, I was really impressed with the, Sarah at First and South has a really robust co mocktail. Mock Interesting. I, okay. It, I love that. I mean, the food that was amazing. So, and, and what I loved, and again, we're, going, we're taking too long, but this was amazing. She did whatever her entire um, bar menu was. A, a platter, all of them came out on the table and it was continued refilled. And my fantasy is always to go to a restaurant, look at the appetizer menu and say, just bring one of yeah. everything. Like take a group of girlfriends. <laughs> and so I think she fulfilled my fantasy of just having everything on the menu on the table. And it was like- She also told me she thought through the finger food thing, which Tracy will appreciate as an event planner, as do I, um, which she had been at another one, no disrespect, but you had to kind of build your food. It wasn't just like a pick up and keep talking. Yeah. And she thought that through, which I think. Good for her, good for her, awesome. Yeah, but Sarah's gonna be on, Sarah's been on the show before, but she's gonna be on the show again next season. So stay tuned. Um, sunrise, sunset. Sunset. Okay. With, do, you have a, do, you have, do you have a secret spot in your backyard? It's not in my backyard, oh. but close. A lot of people like look at the sky from their backyard because it's pretty. No, sadly, my, my backyard has all trees. I don't get a sunset, but um, my favorite is Duck Pond Beach, uh, which is in Kachog. And wait, where is this? I've never been. Not a lot of people know about it. Uh, <laughs> I'll call you. I'll call you. It's a good one. It's a really good Making, one. Um, no, it's Duck yeah. Pond Beach. Okay. Yeah. All right. What's what's your secret spot on farm stands? Like your spit. You you've got to go to get this item at this farm stand. So I've two we're big deep roots fans and i love veronica and tom and they're amazing and so uh, they're the best eggs their chickens when they have them they didn't have them last season there was a whole chicken issue um but uh, we love deep roots i get a lot of plants there this time of year uh, yeah deep roots is great and the best thing about deep roots is it's honor system so no one has to be there you can go whenever yeah. You know, and so I love that. That's actually great because I can just pop by in the evening or whatever. Um, and we're big Sang Lee fans as everybody else, but um, we have our certain things we go to Sang Lee for. And then my last one is um, Eight Hands Prepared Foods. Yeah. Mm. We don't buy a lot of prepared foods because we cook a lot, but I think Eight Hands Prepared Foods are delicious. Yeah. And so they're some of my favorite prepared food. Not a lot of people realize they do that. And I think they put out like picnic tables out in the backyard now. Well, which, they're and then you can see the goats, whatever animals in the backyard. We should really picnic there. Get the food, sit out there. It's like yeah. a, it's picturesque. It's there totally the picturesque. Restaurant element or restaurant. It's like a go. You know, eat yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, counter service. It's actually so. Yeah, I'm a huge Eight Hands fan. Yeah. Same. All right, so, I mean, I feel like the question shouldn't be, why do you love being a part of the North Fork community? It should be, why do we love having you as a part of the North Fork community for yeah. all that you do for us? But we'll we'll let you answer the question. <laughs> yeah, I, I just think, so I say this all the time, and I have to find a more concise way to 
to say it. But I lived in Brooklyn for 25 years, which I loved. And I was always like, I'm never leaving Brooklyn. This is my place. And again, I'm a community person. I like to create communities and I like to connect people. It's just sort of what I do and, and what brings me joy. I have never found a community as supportive as out here. I I, it, it's magical. And I, everyone I know says that. And it's, I don't fully understand how or why, yeah. but it's awesome. And the friendships and connections I've made out here have been so, so much more, um, I would say deeper in yeah. the way I can explain it, where people really connect in a way that I've never experienced. Where I think, I think the natural friends and really care about where, you know, and I just, I think it's also, nature of a lifestyle in that we have a we have more flexibility and i think the example i always use is that in the city when i lived in the city you can't have a dinner party you can't have people over it's just the nature of the, the lifestyle most people can't don't live like that and just getting from place to place is so hard that it's just people are constantly exhausted and i think we have a we have a more space mentally and physically here to yeah. do things and so that's i just feel like people connect are less um guarded I, yeah i think i was gonna say i think the norfolk lets you authentically be who you are and just show up as yeah. you are as opposed to having to put up this you know be a certain way i mean one of my favorite things is being able to wear flip-flops to most restaurants in the summer you know yeah you know, even some of the fancier ones, because it is a lot more casual and maybe not quite flip flops. But you know what I mean? It's much more easygoing um, and casual rather than having to pretend. So thank yeah. you so much, Mel. I, I, I know we could keep talking for another 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I, and always the other thing I was going to say is if anyone wants to join or has any questions, they can always email me at store, arniepapery.com or, you know, come by because I'm here all the time. Wonderful. Well, Sunita, before we end, let's just remind everybody that next Wednesday is our big NOFO Live anniversary party. We are celebrating three complete seasons already. Well, three um, years, because the season might sound like it's a half a year, but it's really a That's true. Year. Three years. Three years. And um, it's open to anybody. There's tickets available for sale, and we would love for everyone to come down. We're going to be closing the guest list this weekend, so you have... You have the the rest of this weekend to buy a ticket or to use your comp code because if yes, because we do compensate all the guests that ha we featured on the show. So please yes. make sure to RSVP before we have to close that list and security doesn't let you in. Yeah, <laughs> security, we have security. Is Char security is Charlie, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> yes, it's at the Hollywood. Tilly will be at the door. Yeah. Tilly will be like, "Are you on the list?" Yes. <laughs> Before you know it, Tilly will be our front desk yeah. second person. She so. will. A, ti a tiny little NOFO, NOFO live hat. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Mel. You thank really you you warm my heart. Every time I see your smiling face, it really does warm me up. And I so appreciate you creating this community for us to all gather and connect and have fun together. Yay. Thanks. Well, thanks for having me, guys. Good have a great weekend. Cool. And, and um, we'll see everybody. Well, we'll see everybody Wednesday. And See you then. Bye. Bye. Bye.